Hello and welcome to St. Mary's Now, a partnership between the Enterprise newspaper and the Forest Center TV video production program. I'm Raymond Graham. And I'm Dylan Sonia Birch. And here's the latest news from the Enterprise. An application for a large-scale solar project in Lexington Park has been withdrawn by its developer after encountering opposition from the nearby naval base. The application for the Whitetail Solar Project was filed earlier this year by LightSource Renewable Energy Development, requesting authority to construct a 20 megawatt altering current solar photovoltaic facility and associated interconnection facilities in the county. This project will no longer be built in 20881 Three Notch Road in Lexington Park. A newly selected principal of Top Gun High School claims that there are two reasons that make him the right person for the job. He will assume over the summer. I'm always trying to excel in every part of my life, says Mark Herner, the current assistant principal at the school. I'm very well suited to continue moving Top Gun forward. Herner says that he considers himself to be a quote, a yes guy, and that he will do anything that he can when it comes to teaching summer school to volunteering at staff meetings. Last Friday's Southern Maryland delegation meeting in Annapolis, Senator Jack Bailey discussed one of his submitted bills, which will prohibit the Maryland Department of Natural Resources from allowing a person to shoot resident Canada geese in Charles County unless the department extends the same privileges to persons in St. Mary's County, according to the Maryland General Assembly website. He mentioned making an amendment to include Calvert County as requiring those privileges as well. Delegate C.T. Wilson spoke up and mentioned that the second part of the bill was throwing him off. He asked the senator why he didn't write the bill as if joining Charles County, rather than not allowing them the privilege if it was denied to St. Mary's and Calvert. Wilson asked, why would we give it up just because you all don't have it? It would make more sense to join us than say if you can't have it, we don't get it. Wilson said if the bill was withdrawn and resubmitted the right way, then of course, Charles County would accept it. A junior varsity football coach walked into Great Mills High School's library in his slacks and purple button-down shirt last Friday morning. Brian Glasper, who's also a substitute teacher, had his poems ready and music cued for this morning's performances. I never had this, and I wish I would have. The 1993 Great Mills grad said, adding that participating gave students a chance to see him in a different light. He was part of the school's first African-American read-in, a national event started by the National Council for Teachers of English. This initiative wasn't new to St. Mary's County. Patricia Cole, Great Mills Media Specialist, got the idea from fellow media specialist Priscilla Dyson, who has been hosting the event at Spring Ridge Middle School for a few years. Cole said the event challenges libraries to host events that incorporate literacy into Black History Month. School staff ministers, priests, and white and black members of the community dropped into classrooms throughout the day and read works by black writers and artists. Now turning to sports. Since 1988, Anthony Lasani has been a staple around the sidelines coaching Choptagon High School Athletics. Last week, the head football coach announced his retirement, marking the end of an era at the school. Deciding it was time to retire was more difficult than I could possibly convey, Lasani said. Coaching football is a year-round job that takes tremendous sacrifice and commitment. To be successful requires support from all levels. I guess I just made a conscious decision that it was time to be a little more selfish and spend more time with family and friends. There was no confusion in Greg Griffith's mind as practice for the wrestling season started in mid-November. Through 38 matches, Griffith has been able to deliver an 8-6 decision in what was the marquee match of the, of the tournament's championship, the 170-pound championship match, and Griffith even earned his first victory over Stokes during the regular season, ending in a 6-5 decision. Griffith said of a key sequence in Saturday's encounter, I was down by 2 or 3 and he tried to, look, to let me up. I got a good takedown with the turn on it and that helped me so much through the last 50 seconds that was left. While Griffith emerged victorious in arguably the tournament's most dramatic moment, La Plata boasted five individual champions and claimed the conference's team championship. The Warriors accumulated 224.5 points, 15 clear of runner at Leonard Town. That's all we have for you in this edition of St. Mary's Now. This news brief has been provided by the Enterprise. For more details, visit somdnews.com. I'm Raymond Graham. And I'm Dylan Sunday Birch. Signing off.